Well, Candace announced her pregnancy this morning, so now we know why she had to leave the show. You can't look at ugly people while you're pregnant. And her castmates are quite ugly on the inside, so I do it for safety of the child. Rob the Throb was also fired, fired, fired. And then she said, I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't let go trying to throw some shade at Candace. No, Candace left on her own accord. She said, look, I didn't spend too much on IVF for y'all to fart up this pregnancy. And I agree. I agree. Oh, this is really sad what happened with G and Mia. And now a lot of things make sense. And again, production, you need to be fired. This was a real story. Lord. A lot of people have to go through with mental illness in the family. This is a real story that they are opening up. And instead of focusing on this, you focus on Giselle's non-storyline and Robin's lack of marriage. Fire production, fire production, fire freaking production and bring Giselle along with you. Giselle ain't got nothing to show, but we'll get to that in a minute at the live portion of the video. So Mia's doing the right thing. She's taking care of herself, but she's also making sure that her kid's father is okay. So if he hadn't had this illness, he would have been a coined coot. That's a shame. And this shows the stigma of mental illness in the black community amongst black men. This should have been the focus of the season. It would have been interesting. It would have been real. It would have been healthy. Get Giselle off the show. She's the problem. So it wasn't embezzlement. It was mental illness. So now the lawsuits are dropped. And now Mia's behavior and lack of explanation makes sense. And the fact that they were going to talk about this on the show, I'm just so disgusted with production. Oh, Mia is definitely taken over for Giselle after this. Mia has personal story and Giselle does not. Next season is Giselle's last season. I don't understand what she's here for. I, I'm tired of this. Oh, she's the face of the show. She's going to be there forever. Get rid of her. They said the same thing about Nene, and the network goes rolling along. Giselle is in her early Nene stage. She actually know because Nene was always that girl. Giselle, you, you were okay. You were that girl by default because we didn't really know you. But you have no personal story. If you had a relationship and were open about it, and you know, when your man messes up and your communication issues, you going in on other relationships would be so much more palatable. Because it's like, okay, it's equal footing. But because you either don't have one or don't show it, mind your business. Get you some business and mind it. What? NECA grew up in Wisconsin and Illinois. I thought you were from LA. LA raised, wait, Nigeria made me. LA raised me. And now Potomac, I, I don't know. I don't want you to come back. You just, you just weren't interesting this season. But all talk turns to the shrine and the osu. And Wendy has her moment. Ashley, since you brought this to the cast, what does it mean? Silence. So casting wanted NECA to come on through Wendy and Wendy said, no, I believe this is production's mess. I believe production told NECA, oh, well, Wendy didn't want you to come on through her and gas this whole crap up. I blame production and Ashley's forehead. Now, NECA, you and this, I have met Wendy. Do you know how many people I've met? I'm sure there are other comedians that I've done open mics with in New York. I've met Michelle Wolf. She may remember me. She may not. That don't mean we know each other. She might recognize you from across the room, but you don't know her and stop bumping your gums that you do. Ha! Wendy said, then why did you tell them I know you? No, I said I met you. Well, you alluded that you knew them, but why are you angry? Why are you so angry? You better give that rent a read. So if Married to Medicine wanted you on, why don't you go over there? And when Wendy looked at NECA and said, no, 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 no. 
She was like, I can't even. I, you got to roast her. You, you got to let her explain. I can't, I can't even get mad at that. Ha! And Karen said, I love this rooster she's giving. It's very surf arms. What was your intention on bringing it up? And why not bring it up to Wendy? Yeah, because Wendy would have said, girl, put it back. Put it back. Shout out to the put it back lady from TikTok. Wendy ain't never going to be here for NECA. Not never, ever. She said we can coexist. We can move forward. Wendy ain't never going to see it. It's over. Wendy wasn't here for it when you tried to introduce the heifer. She said, I don't know her, nor do I want to know her. That was the unsaid part, nor do I want to know her. I don't want to meet her. Kiana comes out, she is looking good in this Chanel. And I liked her confessional look too. So we get on Wendy for not checking on her when she was sick. And because she's close with Cal, it makes sense that Giselle would check on her because Giselle is close with Cal. So I would say, Candace, that's the one time she might not have been being calculating. But you can never put anything past her or her fashions. I mean, the woman met me at BravoCon wearing a toilet brush. Exhibit A. Now we get to Wendy's segment, and she's released her talk show on her YouTube, and we are going to review it. Let's look it up. And child, YouTube, where the coin at? Shannon Sharp made how much? You better. I'm not making that kind of money, though, so please join the Patreon. <laughs> We're not there yet, but we will get there. Not 10,000 views. Okay, well, at least now we know it's here. It's been here for a couple months now. First episode was four months ago, Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to check it out, and I'll let y'all know what I think. But you got to do a little more promotion, hon. Wendy, I understand about booking guests for every single episode. I get it. It is not easy. A lot of these people that on the podcast, they pay their guests. Now, Candace, I know you want to be supportive. But this was a moment when you should have kept that mouth shut. You booked Destiny's Child. She booked Latavia. That is not Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child would include Beyonce. That would be the whole group. A, a member of Destiny's Child is Kelly Rowland. Latavia is a former member of Destiny's Child. I mean, even Michelle Williams could be a backup singer of Destiny's Child. A, a Bridgerton. What would you? What do you call Michelle a? A bridge, what do you call a bridge singer? I mean, it's not backup, but I, I don't know if I call her a full-fledged group member either. I love that Eddie took Happy Eddie, and he's got two million in sales. Mm-hmm. I want to see Wendy spend the weed money next season. <laughs> Wendy said, my mama may be very religious, but she's also very Nigerian, so as long as he get into the bag legal, she cool. She cool. Wendy said, look, I may have several different careers, but I need several different checks. I still teach because they only film this show like four or five months out of the year. She said the candles still ship. And that's like, OK, you've advertised it. People know they're there. You made your little money like Rob's caps. After that, we talk about Wendy calling me a slow. And Wendy said, Living in Maryland and North Carolina was a bi-coastal lifestyle. Do I call that quick on the uptake? Mia, I called you a pathological liar. I said that to your face in BravoCon. It ain't nothing new. Everybody calls you Mia the liar. Mia be lying. Shout out to Kempire. Oh my God. I asked you straight up to a roar of audience applause and laughter. Mia. Will you be able to keep your timeline of events straight this season? And you say, I, I can't even remember. I will roll footage. Don't make me. We start Ashley's section with, with chatter of her non-divorce. And honey, in this economy, keep your coot. Keep your coot and let him cheat in peace. She said, I rub his feet every night. That's good paying work. That's good paying work. You better keep it. Twitter said you acted like you were playing chess, not checkers. 
but all you ended up with was a house note you can't afford and two 75 year old looking children now i didn't say that that was twitter and that was mean of black twitter to say but they said it it's on twitter i didn't say it but i just thought you should know that it was said but i didn't say it i didn't tweet it i saw it quote i'm just reporting things just letting you know what's going on in regards to the show. But Ashley, you ain't on a toxic cycle. You can't find nobody else that's gonna take you and them two kids in. So you better keep your coop and hope he croak. Drop down and get your kegel on, but he one of them healthy coots. You can't even, you know, fuck him to death. And he eat healthy, so you can't give him, you know, some decent soul food and then put it on him and let the arteries do the rest. You got a tough road to hoe, and I mean hoe. What? <coughs> they asking how much Ashley want. She say a sizable amount, but then she said, "I know G and A will be great." I gotta start believing in myself like that. Nekka gone ask, "Oh well, if you got a divorce, he'd still be there for you if you need." No, that's why you get divorced. <laughs> He's married and he's still getting some pussy, so he's loose with the purse. Child, once the, once the court says this is what's ordered, that is what will be done. And then when you come to him and say, hey, I need money, do you know what he gonna do? He gonna take them kids because he's going to say she is unfit because she cannot provide. And I won't have my children living under a bridge with the grandmother by Georgia Tenoning. Georgia Tenton on it. Y'all need to get in touch with me so we could do an ad together. And she said he'll be here for the children. But how does that extend to me? <laughs> exactly. It's like he will take care of the children, which are his responsibility. Where does the line fall of I got to take care of you too and you have to be a grown woman that takes care of herself. And then also once the kids are grown... Which, you know, they already, what, four or five? That, them years starting to tick off. The 18 years go fast when, you know, that's money coming in. So you realize that that paycheck will end and end abruptly. Sheree said, I'll never forget. Jade turned 18, the check stopped coming. Yes. Yes. Why do you think you're going to keep getting money when you are no longer taking care of the kid? That kid is in college that I'm paying for. Now they're calling me for money. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Ashley said, this man swept me off my feet and said, if you work and you can't travel the world with me. And she said, say less. <laughs> That's what you do when a blessing walks up to you. What was she supposed to say? Well, no, let me stay here. And where would she be today? With her mama. G-T-A. Georgia 10 Nawning. Girl, he is living in that house. That's why you massage his feet every night. That's present tense. See, he took that trip and she's like, look, I'm letting him cheat in peace. That's what it is. But he's in that house. He got keys to that house. And that's why he's paying bills in that house. And she's reaping the benefits. And that's why she was like, let me put these breasts on this new card. I think also he don't want to be a part of the show no more. He don't want to be a part of the show. And so this way they're divorcing, they're separated. So whatever he's doing, whoever he's doing it with, it's not a story. But I could see both of them playing the show like fiddles and being like, okay, look, I was a storyline enough. Now here you go. Giselle said Robin is very by the penny. Because that's all she got is the penny. The penny. Rob said if you can eliminate camel toe and coochie sweat, I figure you need a jock strap. Hanes or fruit of the loom. BVD. Yeah. Rob is a BVD jock strap kind of person. Girl. Jasmine Bram rumor and they just fired NECA. And now we get to the blow-by-blow blow of the skirmish. The brawl. Okay, it does not matter. Whatever Candace wanted to call Deborah, because Deborah inserted herself into a situation where she was neither wanted nor welcome. You tried to mess with this woman's marriage, so whatever she has to say about you on the platform that you knew she had, let her say. You were embarrassed by your own actions. 
That's what embarrassed you. Now, Mia says she tried to step to me. Now, Mia also wants to say, oh, I said, oh, you're a 10. I didn't take the bait. Mm -mm. Nice try, Mia. You an old fighting stripper hoe. You told her, oh, we all 10. And you said it with your hands like, come on, heifer. Come on. Oh, you look good. You you said it with that danger in your voice where she knew, oh, she John, she going to whoop my ass. She going to whoop it thoroughly. And I believe, I mean, you a first bop kind of girl. We saw it with Wendy. And Wendy isn't a fighter. But I'm sorry, when you're on a show like this, people are going to be shady and talk shit. How the hell is Wendy responsible? And Deborah wanted to fight with Candace when she started it saying her husband was giving her the eye. So how is Candace responsible for a heifer who started with her and she responds? Now, I'm sorry. Nobody is getting on Deborah for violating Candace's personal space. Also for what she tried to do to Chris and his career. Get here. But everybody's so upset. Ashley, you can't call her vermin. You can't call her a varmint. You said my husband was giving you the eye and he was playing best fiends. Honey, it don't look like God gave you the eye. You look like you were put together blindfolded. You look like something you'd find at the bottom of a grab bag. I will say when Candace said, none of you will fight with me. She's like, that's why I picked this box up because I don't know if Giselle set me up or not. And why is this half a year? For some people, you hit too low. You came for my marriage. It's okay for Deborah to come for her marriage and lie on her husband, but oh, Candace hits too low. The line is always moving. And Ashley, how you defending your fighting ass friend? Ashley, you invited Deborah to be messy. She is your pit bull, your malnourished pit bull. She said she wanted to clear the air. No, she wanted to st She wanted to put that wig in the air. She wanted to throw a track in the air. Ashley, maybe Michael believes your lies, but I don't. Ashley, you are the queen of aftermath apologies. It wasn't my intention, but yet it always happens. So we end it with, well, we know. We know. So I will uh, let everybody watch this and we'll go live.